In the previous section, we looked at polynomial functions. Before that, we looked at algebra functions. And one of them was division of functions. And then in chapter 1, we looked at reciprocal functions. And we talked about terminologies of asymptotes, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, and oblique asymptotes. So here, we're going to look at quotient functions, which are defined as the ratio of any two functions. And the domain of the quotient function is all numbers that are in the domain of the intersection of the two numerator denominator functions where the denominator is not 0. Because otherwise, you'll have undefined quantity in the denominator. If you replace numerator denominator by polynomial functions, then you will have something called rational function. So quotient of polynomial functions are called rational functions. The domain would be all real numbers, except for all places where denominator is 0. Since both p of x and q of x polynomial functions, their domain is all real numbers. The end behavior of polynomial functions was dictated by the highest degree term, so leading coefficient times x to the highest power. For quotient functions, the end behavior is observation of what happens to the quotient as x goes to plus or minus infinity, similar to what we were doing at polynomial functions. Except here, the end behavior might give rise to asymptotes. So you have to be careful as to what kind of end behavior we have. So if our quotient approaches a linear function with 0 slope as x goes to plus or minus infinity, we will call that constant, y equals that constant, our horizontal asymptote. If your rational function approaches f of x, where f of x is y equals mx plus b with non-zero slope, we call this a slant or oblique asymptote. So as x goes to plus or minus infinity, if your function r of x approaches a constant, which is a linear function with 0 slope, you have horizontal asymptotes. If your rational function approaches a linear function, mx plus b with non-zero slope, as x approaches plus or minus infinity, we call that a slant or oblique asymptote. All right, let's have a little fun and see what kind of graphs can have these asymptotes. We're not going to worry about the actual arithmetic part of it. I just want you to have some fun. So you can have horizontal asymptote to be positive. You can have the horizontal asymptote to be any number on the y-axis. So you could have a positive or a negative horizontal asymptote. For now, pause the video here and see what your imagination allows you to create so that these functions will have these horizontal asymptotes. Remember, that means as x goes to plus or minus infinity, your graph approaches y equals b. So pause the video here. Go ahead and draw the possibilities. I really want you to play. It does not matter whether you understand the arithmetic of it. But creatively, what kind of graphs can you come up with? Go ahead. You can do that. Just take a pencil and draw the graphs that get closer and closer to the red dotted line here that you see y equals b. I'm pausing because I really want you to draw. Don't just sit there waiting for my answers here. Please go ahead, use your head, and come up with graphs. Make it as funky as you can make them. Go ahead. All right, so assuming you've come back, let's take a look. Well, if you have a horizontal asymptote as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, you want the y coordinates to come closer. So I could have from the left hand side, the graph is going up towards it, right hand side is coming from above towards it. I can have the opposite. I can have from the right hand side, it's coming from below. And from the left hand side, it's coming from above. I could also have the graphs, both of them, coming from top, left and right, or both of them coming from below, left and right. 
Do you think that those are the only possibilities or do you think there are more? Good. Some of you had awesome graphs. You can have graphs that cut through and then taper off to it. So this is called the point of intersection where you see them intersect. As long as eventually the graph gets closer and closer to the y equals b line, you're good. Yep, same thing from the other side. You can also have the intersection points come from uh, above. I can also have the graph come up and down several times and then taper off. From the other side, I can have the same thing. I can go down and up and eventually taper off. So you can see that these are the points of intersection. Here, this is the point of intersection. Here, this is a point of intersection. So the graph can intersect a finite number of times as long as eventually the graph gets closer and closer to the line y equals b. All right, let's see what possibilities are there for a vertical asymptote. So if you have x equals a as a vertical asymptote, you can have positive vertical asymptotes or negative vertical asymptotes. And then, again, pause the video here and create graphs that can have x equals a as their asymptotes. And you can have more than one vertical asymptotes. You can have as many as you want. You can even have infinitely many vertical asymptotes. Those are points where the denominator are 0. So go ahead. Figure out what kind of graph would look like near the vertical asymptote. Go ahead, pause the video, and play with it. Good. From the left, the graph is shooting up towards infinity on the left-hand side of x equals a. On the right-hand side, the graph is shooting to negative infinity. That's one possibility. You can also have the other way. From the left, it's shooting to negative infinity. From the right, it's shooting to positive infinity. You can also have graph shooting to positive infinity from the left and from the right-hand side of A. And the same thing can happen to negative infinity. From left and right-hand side, graph is shooting to negative infinity. Some of you asked, what if the graph does what it did with the horizontal? intersect a finite number of times and then taper off. Can you have that? Think about it for a second. The answer is no, because you cannot have this as a point of intersection and this as a point of intersection, because otherwise it will not pass the vertical line test. The whole reason x equals a was asymptote is because it's not in your domain. So the function cannot have any of these values for x equals a. So the graph cannot intersect vertical asymptote. All right, what about oblique or slant asymptote? That just means like y equals mx plus b, and the b can be anything. Slope is m non-zero, and so that means you go up a certain ways and over a certain ways. So, so you can have a negative or a positive slope. And again, pause the video here, and let's see what possibilities can you come up with for your graphs. Go ahead. Pause the video and draw whatever your heart desires. Be creative. Assuming you've come back, we can have the graph shooting towards the line from below or from above. As x goes to negative infinity is above the line. As x goes to positive infinity is below the line. You can do the same thing on the other side. As x goes to negative infinity, the graph is below the slant line or above the slant line. You can also have them both from the same direction. You can also have graph where it cuts through from below and you have a point of intersection right there. What if you put these together then, whether you have a combination of vertical and horizontal asymptotes or vertical and slant asymptotes, what could your graphs look like? Take a look. So let's say you have vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Draw possibilities of graphs that you could have. Go ahead, you do that. Both behaviors, both 
vertical and horizontal behaviors of the function have to match. So go ahead. All right, assuming you've come back, let's see. There are so many possibilities, we'll discuss a few. There are so many possibilities, we'll discuss a few. So take your pen, and we could have, if your behavior of a function as x goes to negative infinity is above, then you can either go up, and from here you can go down like this, or you can be under here and over here. You can have combination. You can be above and then taper off. You can be on top here, and it will just go down. So lots of possibilities. Let's do it on this end. Again, I can have the graph go up. Here I can be coming down. So lots of possibilities. It's your imagination is the only thing that will curtail what kind of graphs you can have. So whatever you can imagine, I am sure we can find an algebraic expression which is a numerator over denominator that fits that description. All right, let's see what you can come up with here. Go ahead, play with it. All right, you've come back. So let's take a pen. You can draw this and this. Those are the possibilities. You can also have the graph go like that on the other end. You can also have the graph go up, intersect, and then taper off. Same thing here. You can have it go up and then come down to go close. Lots of possibilities here. And again, your imagination is all that prevents you from thinking of what kind of graphs you can have. So let's play with polynomial functions in decimals and see if you can actually match up the shapes you drew to the graphs that you created. So to the shapes you got, let's fit some rational functions and see if you are successful in creating all kinds of functions. Let's do that next. Let's recall a few things about rational functions. If you have a numerator over denominator polynomials, we can do long division and write it as quotient plus remainder over divisor, where the degree of the remainder is always smaller than degree of the denominator. So if you write it in this form, you can see that as x goes to plus or minus infinity, since the denominator has higher power, remainder over divisor will go to 0 because the denominator will dominate and take the denominator to infinity faster than your remainder polynomial. And so that means if you cover the remainder and divisor up as x goes to plus or minus infinity, you're left with quotient, which means as x goes to plus or minus infinity, your quotient is what gives you your horizontal or oblique asymptote. If your quotient is not a linear but a higher order polynomial, then the function will still get closer and closer to it. We just don't call it a horizontal or slant asymptote. We just say your function's asymptotic behavior is like the quotient function. That's really the only difference. So this is going to be very important when you're creating examples to fit the graphs that you just made up. And so n behavior of rational functions is dictated by the quotient. If your quotient function is a constant term, you have a horizontal asymptote. If it's a linear function with non-zero slope, you have an oblique asymptote. If you have a higher order polynomial for quotient, you have asymptotic behavior where the function, original function, gets closer and closer to the quotient function. The denominator, wherever the denominator is undefined, you have possible vertical asymptotes. You have to do further investigation closer to those x equals numbers that make denominator 0 to see what the behavior of the function is. So let's go investigate and do some examples. 
All right, let's start reviewing with reciprocal functions. So here's our function x minus 1 times x plus 2, which means that x equals 1 and x equals negative 2 are your zeros. And so what happens in the reciprocal functions? Do you remember? So clearly, x equals negative 2 and x equals 1 are your vertical asymptotes. And as x goes to positive infinity, graph shoots to positive infinity, which means that 1 over infinity will get closer and closer to 0. And so y equals 0 will be your horizontal asymptote. Here we have a negative 2 point something. 1 over that would be negative, like a little bit closer to half. And so when you do reciprocal functions, all negative values will stay negative. Anything that's getting closer and closer to 0 would shoot to infinity. Anything that's getting closer and closer to infinity will go to 0. So we've seen how our quotient function looks like, which is this graph right here. You can see that this point is closer to negative half. When x is negative half, you are at negative 0.44. You can see that 1 negative 2 point whatever and 1, same thing, 1.3 and whatever and 1, because 1 over 1 is 1. So those coordinates stay. But other than that, let's hide our original graph so you can see what happened to our reciprocal function. So we used to say how the graph blew up. All the values here shoot to negative infinity as x gets to negative 2 from the right and positive infinity as x gets closer to negative 2 from the left. At x equals 1 from the left goes to negative infinity, from the right goes to positive infinity. Same thing as x goes to positive infinity, graph shoots to 0. x goes to negative infinity, a graph also goes to 0. So let's see what, proper, what happens to the reciprocal function here. Again, at x equals 1 and negative 1, we are going to have asymptotes. And it's a polynomial function, which shoots to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity and positive infinity as x goes to uh, positive infinity. That means y equals 0 is your horizontal asymptote. x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 are your vertical asymptotes. So our graph is going to look like this. Again, it blew up. So this part here that is pointing up is now pointing down. This point down here is now up. And this point that's going up is coming down. So it does exactly the opposite when you do inversions or 1 over, so reciprocal functions. All right, let's take a look at x squared plus 2. Here's the graph of x squared plus 2. And here's the graph of its reciprocal function. And again, you can see y equals 0 is your asymptote. Here we have no vertical asymptotes because the graph is never 0 in the denominator. All right, now some of the other functions that you were playing with. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's enter some functions here that we created. We already know some of our power function. That's our 1 over x. If you wanted it to have a horizontal asymptote at, say, 2, then you would have the quotient to be 2. So here is our graph with quotient 2. So y equals 2 is your horizontal asymptote. So x equals 0 is your vertical asymptote. If I wanted to shift that to 1, we already saw from before that if you wanted to shift left or right, you have to change the x part. Move up and down, you have to change the constant that you add. So again, if I make that a minus 2, then minus 2, then x equals negative 2 will be your asymptote. So if you consider the function where remainder is 1, divisor is x plus 1, and the quotient is negative 2, then y equals negative 2 is your asymptote. What if I wanted this piece that is down here to be up, like here? What do you think we should do then? Good. If you remember anything about power functions, you take the denominator and square it. If you wanted both of them to be underneath, then you have to make this a negative. So you can see just right here, we got almost all of it. 
Now, what if I wanted it to intersect at x equals 1? Then instead of 1, I can make the numerator x minus 1. In order to see that, you may have to put a little constant in front just so you can see how the graph looks. So let's just go a little closer to it. You can see how there's the point 1, negative 2. So I made it intersect at 1 by adding the remainder to have x equals 1 as your factor. You can make this bottom a fourth power and make the numerator go second power. And you can see now it's above. And again, it intersects and goes up again. If I keep this a, a 1 power, make this a 40, then you can see it's up a little bit more. So playing with the constant allows you to see what is going on. You can see how I made it go up and down. If I wanted to have another factor, say x minus 2, now I have two factors here. And let's change this 40 to 80. And you can see it a little more clearly. Here you have 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 2. So by controlling your numerator, you control where the graph intersects the horizontal asymptote. And again, y equals negative 2 is your horizontal asymptote. Numerator power is second degree. Denominator power is fourth power. On the other side, if you zoom out a little bit, you can see the graph. You can see this is the whole graph here. So we do have a graph on the left-hand side. What if I wanted the left-hand side to have an intercept point and not just the right-hand side? Just to add another factor here, say x plus 2. So there are a lot of possibilities here. OK, what if I wanted to have uh, oblique asymptote? Then instead of 2, so let's make that a plus, and let's say 2x plus 3. And here I would have to make that also a 2x plus 3 for my asymptote. And because I did not change the numerator, you can still see the graph intersects at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. You can also figure out what the x-intercepts are by making common denominator and setting it to 0. So lots of possibilities. Now, what if I make this bottom a uh, cubic function just a different kind of graph we got here? Many different possibilities for our functions exist. If I make that a 1 and get rid of this, then it will only intersect at x equals 1. I can make it a square. Now look what the graph looks like. So you can play with all these different functions. But as long as you keep the numerator power smaller than denominator power, you can add whatever you want here to make it a constant or a slant asymptote. If you want it to be able to have a curve as your asymptotic behavior, then you just have to change, then you just have to change the asymptotes and again plotting your function, like say, you can see how the graph is hugging the vertical asymptote and the parabolic curve. So you can make your graphs as simple or as complicated as you would like.